<laughs> thank God. Okay. All right. So we have Miss Naomi Bush with us today. Let's thank her for being here. Apparently, she's going to talk about superpowers. So. Yes. All right. All right. All yours, Naomi. Thank you. All right. So thank you so much uh, for being here and for coming. Uh, let's see. Did it stop working? Oh well. I tried. Of course, right? We just tested it. All right. So thank you so much. Uh, like you said, my name is Naomi and um, I'm going to be talking today about how to automate the content on your site using a form builder. Um, and I like to call it superpowers. The reason why is because it's something that people normally don't consider using a form builder to do. But I love form builders and basically what I do is I use form builders to help business owners like you quickly achieve complicated functionality that they previously thought either was impossible or would need a lot of coding. Okay? And so if what you're trying to do involves receiving data and then processing that data in some form or fashion, then what I want you to do is ask if your form builder is up for the job. Okay, so many times I run across people and they say, well, you know, I need to do this thing, let's say, um, I don't know, I need to take donations, right? So I need a donations plugin, or I need to um, allow people to list things on my site, so I need a listings plugin. All right, they automatically go to directly what they think it is. But a form builder, I love them because they are so open-ended. Again, if all you need to do is take in data, that is receive data, and then process that data, a form builder might be the tool for the job. Okay? And my professional goal here is to get you to ask that. Is my form builder the right tool for the job? Why? Because you probably already have one. All right? Who here has a website but does not have a contact form on that website? You do not have a contact form. Yeah. Okay. All right. So most people, if you have a website, you probably have a contact form on that website. All right? And so that's why. Because it's something that you already have. Uh, it's incredibly powerful. Uh, I like to say my mother taught me how to be resourceful. All right? So if you already have it and it's good and it can be used, then let's use it. All right? So you are in the right place if you have or you want to build a website. Okay. Um, if you want to allow people other than you to submit content on that website, however, you do not want to give them access to the back end of your site for whatever reason. Maybe it's for security. Maybe it's just that you know you feel that the back end is complicated. You want to keep things simple. You want to keep them focused. You don't want them looking around at all the other things. All right. You're in the right place if you then want to display that content that they submit on your site. Okay. Um, let's say you want to approve that content first, all right, before it gets displayed publicly out to the world. Um, maybe you want them to pay to submit that content, okay? Um, you want them to be able to go back and update the content that they submitted. And then bonus points if you don't have to be hands-on every step of the way, all right? And you can kind of automate it and put it on autopilot, all right? Now that's what you want. All right, so. Challenge accepted. I have uh, about 24 minutes, all right? And let's, let's walk through this. So first, what is a form builder? So here's a form, our trusty contact form that we have all, you know, likely seen. But in order to build this form, uh, that's kind of what you need to, to do, all right? You, you've got that code there. So a form builder is a WordPress plugin that kind of allows you to visually build your forms, right? Instead of having to know how to code, all right? Normally in a drag and drop type of interface, right? So you take your field and you drag it and say, this is what I want. Uh, the most common type of form that we all know of is a contact form, all right? So that's one interface and here's another form builder. Here's their interface. As you can see, it's all about fields and place your fields where you want them to go, all right? But you'll notice here that there are actually many types of fields, all right? So just using it for a contact form, we can actually do a whole lot more. Let's look at these type of fields that we have. Single line text, paragraph text, drop down fields, number fields, radio buttons, hidden fields, 
uh, name, date, phone, address, website, username, password, email, file upload, list fields, product fields, credit card fields, currency fields. That's a whole lot more than a contact form, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so with a form builder you can collect anything you want and then process it in a myriad number of ways. Here are some example uh, things that you can use for processing your form, right? So you can have, your, have a form that collects a payment and it's processed with Stripe or PayPal. You can take in some form data and send it to Salesforce, uh, send it to HubSpot and Fusionsoft. Uh, when people sign up, you can add them to a MailChimp list. Uh, and then there's Zapier. If you're not familiar with Zapier, Zapier is, oh gosh, Zapier is awesome. Um, they're over, excuse me? WordPress glue. Oh, yeah, WordPress glue. There you go. That's a good one. Uh, so today we're going to talk about how to use your form builder specifically to collect content for your site. Okay. All right, so let's say you want to allow guest posting on your business site or food recipes blog or let's see, anybody. What, what type of site do you have that you want to allow people to post to? Somebody. Yes. Holistic wellness. Okay, holistic wellness. Anybody else? No? Yeah. Volunteers. Volunteers. Okay. Lesson plan submissions. Lesson plan submissions. Okay, I like that. Okay. Images. Blog, okay, all right, all right, so I'll work with that. Okay, but you don't want, so you want people to be able to post, but you don't want them in the back end of your site. Well, fire up your trusty form builder and you can have them do it on the front end. So we're gonna create a form as you see here with the fields for the information that you need. Uh, in this particular form, um, I have some post fields, so post title, post image, post body, post category, yes. What do you recommend is the most capable form builder? Ooh, we'll get into that. Okay. okay. But most form builders, you know, the features are basically uh, on par. Okay. So it's really a matter of preference. Um, but we'll I'll talk about that at the end. All right. And so then, once you have your fields, you then want to indicate that you are going to create a post. Okay. You can set the post to either be automatically published, as you can see here, uh, or you can say no, just make it a draft, right? And I'll go in and you know make sure that it's okay. Um, or you can put it in pending review. You know any of the post statuses that you have there. Um, and that's in one interface. And here's another interface from another form builder. As you can see here, it's you know you have your fields, post title, content, featured image. Um, categories, all right? And then you indicate, hey, when, when this form is submitted, save it as a post type, okay? And one of the things that I love about using a form builder for submitting content is the automatic validation that it gives you. Uh, I was speaking with someone and one of the things that they mentioned was that um, their content process is to have people email in the content. Right? And so inevitably things are missing, right? You're missing an image here or this isn't, uh, this isn't correct, right? And so they have to do the whole back and forth to get everything completed. Well, with a form, you just make the field required, right? Put a field for what you absolutely need, make it required, and then if, if um, they haven't filled in the required information, then guess what? It's not submitted. Right, so you always have everything that you need. Uh, another thing here is, um, let's say you have, you know, a maximum word count. Um, you know, that's another thing that you can do. And there are so many different uh, automatic validation things. Yes. I'm looking at the, the logged in user as author, but if you don't want them to have to log in, would they still be able to show as the author, even though they're not a, a logged in user of your uh, site? Um. Yeah. Probably. Probably. So would you make another, I guess, field that says author so they can put their names? You could. So you can do it? Yep, you could. Now, in order to make someone an author of a WordPress post, they have to have a user account in WordPress, though. So now they don't have to be logged in, but they do have to have a user account. Okay. So, okay. But you could just um, make that field, hide that field and use the field you create. Correct. In ECF. That's right. Um, yeah, you could use ACF, but it's not, not required, but I do know a lot of people that use it. Okay, so that is if you're creating a WordPress post, all right? But what if your content isn't exactly a WordPress post, right? Say you're collecting um, 
a list of team member profiles, right? Or maybe donors and payments, all right? I think someone mentioned volunteers. Uh, maybe real estate properties for sale. Uh, event registrations, all right? You want to collect this information, all right? But you also want it to be able to, dis to be displayed on the front, of, front end of your site. I think I mentioned before, uh, recipes. Um, no problem, you know, your form builder has this built in. Here's another example. Um, you know, maybe it's some kind of uh, gallery. So your form builder has this uh, built in. And here's, here's an example of, um, these are actually just entries from a form builder that are displayed in different formats. Here it's displayed, um, let's see, you probably collected an image and then a description and then a website and a phone. Right, and you can click to view details. And as you can see, it's in a format where you can search through the information that was submitted and it's also paged as well, okay? Here's another example of people submitting information and it is displayed on a map, okay? So when the person on your form, you probably have a field that says, you know, what's your address, okay? And here it is, this is, this is done just with a form builder. Okay, and so every entry that is submitted uh, gets uh, a marker on the map. Okay, and then people can search through it. This is just a form builder. And this is why I say it's like superpowers, right? Because, I mean, not a single line of code, just a form builder. Just that thing that you're using to build your contact form. All right, so come on, give it a job. Hire it. Come on, give it a promotion. All right. All right. You can even allow people to vote and add their own ratings and reviews on the information that is submitted. So here's an example. Enable entry reviews, um, five star rating limited to one review per person, and this is what it looks like. Again, these are just entries that are submitted in a form, displayed in a format, and on, the, on this side um, you can vote and on this side, you can add stars. So it's just different types of uh, reviews that you, can, uh, that you can have there. Okay. Let's see. All right. So what if you want to approve the content that people submit first? All right? And this is good for, um, you know, let's say you want to make sure that people aren't submitting spam. Or maybe there's just a whole process, you know, that things have to go through. Um, and I'll show, you, I'll show you an example of that, okay? So the first thing that you can do is you can simply receive an email when someone submits your form. That's this example here. Uh, admin notification, when the form is submitted, we're gonna send it to uh, a particular email address. And then you know, okay, log into your site and you know, manually approve this, right? Another thing that you can do is you can go in and oh, I'm sorry, this is where you uh, manually approve it. So you have your check mark and um, your X. If you say no, it's rejected, right? And then you can set things up to only display the content that has been approved. So there it is. Show only approved entries. Okay. The next thing that you can do is you can actually set up a full approval workflow. All right, with like multiple steps and branches, like if the person submitted this, then send it here. If they um, submitted something else, then send it somewhere else, all right? And so here's an example where you can actually receive an email, all right, when the form is submitted, and then from your email, you can either click an approve or a reject link, all right? So that's part of, yes? Um, what is this specifically from? Like what plugin? This is specifically from Gravity Forms. Okay. So here's the email that you set up, and then you just add the approve link and the reject link. All right. And so that's part of that autopilot stuff where when someone submits something and it needs to be approved or rejected, it comes right to your email. You know, you pull it up and say, you look at the information and say, okay, approved or no, rejected. You know, I don't like that. Send it back to them. And so here's where we get into a whole stepped procedure, all right? So you can set up multiple steps. Here's one for uh, purchase orders, all right? So someone submits their purchase order information. Uh, it needs to be approved, and I'll show you how to set up an approval step. Uh, 
Uh, if it needs to be edited, you can send it back uh, for user input, and then it has to be approved again, and then maybe it has to be sent you know, to a supervisor and then to a manager, all right? and it can automatically go through those things. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, so here it is. We're setting up a step. Step type is approval. And here is where we assign the step to um, whoever it needs to be assigned to. Okay, you can assign it to one person, you can assign it to multiple people. You can set it up so that only one person has to approve it. Um, let's say you have a supervisor and a backup, or you can set it up so that everyone that it's assigned to has to approve it before it can be considered complete. All right, and then finally, here at the bottom, you can see next step if rejected or next step if approved. And that's where you set up the next step that it goes to. So when I talked about putting things on autopilot, someone submits your form. It gets sent to your email. You say, OK. You click the link in your email. I'm approving this. It automatically gets sent to the next step in the workflow. OK. You didn't have to do that. You didn't have to manually send it, email it to your supervisor, or man manually email it to your manager. Um, and that's what that is for right there. Where well, you set up your next steps if rejected, next steps if approved. OK. OK. And then the one thing that I did mention is you can also, let's say something is just not right. You need to send it back to the user. Here's an example of sending it back to the user with the fields highlighted right, that are incorrect, saying, hey, you need to fix these right here. OK, yes? When you have someone like submit things for a post, mm -hmm. are, is there format? Can you have it formatted so like it? Absolutely. OK, they can yeah. put it so that it looks. Um, Absolutely. So, they, okay. so if it's a WordPress post, it's just going to use your theme. right? Um, if it's not a WordPress post and it's entries in a form, what you can do is, um, and I think I don't have that in the slide, but what you do is you select which fields from the form you want to show, mm -hmm. and then you can format that using HTML, I'm sorry, using CSS. Oh, no, so All right. Oh, you're talking about? Yeah. That's not going to work, but I hear you. <laughs> or, um, but yeah. Yes, yeah, I hire someone to do that. <laughs> or you can, have a, you can have it just use the default styles in your theme. Okay. So. Um, the one that I'm thinking of, what it does is it has locations where it says this is the top, this is the side, this is this area right here, and then this is the bottom. And so you can select where you want the fields to go in. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it just populates it based on correct. the basic layout. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, now, what we've done so far is we've got people submitting posts. Um, we've got um, we have it set up so that we can approve it first. We can send it through an approval workflow. And now, what if you want people to pay? Okay. Well, you know, pay $100 to list your job for the month. Um, there are a lot of paid uh, listings type of sites. Well, your form builder has payment add-ons. These are some of the most popular, Stripe, PayPal, uh, Authorize.net, Braintree. Um, but most of these have, I mean, all kinds of payment add-ons, things I've never heard of. Um, a lot of um, <coughs> international uh, payment providers, you know, it's your choice. All right, and so when you set up a form builder with a payment add-on, then the form isn't submitted until the payment is complete. But you say, well, you know, what if, um, you know, I want, I want the information to be submitted, right, but I want to review it first, and then if I accept it, then I want to have the payment, right? But I want to make sure that they can pay first, All right? Well, you can do that. Um, as part of that workflow that I showed you, here's an example of a form with a uh, credit card field. But part of that is here you see a PayPal step, right? So you can add a PayPal step to the workflow. Once it's approved, then it'll automatically be sent to the next step, which means that the person will receive uh, a request to pay via PayPal automatically, okay? 
All right. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can also just collect their credit card details but not charge them until later. So you can say, well, if this costs $100, I want to make sure that you have the $100, but I don't want to charge you yet. All right. So the payment add-on can authorize the $100 on the card, you know, and just hold it there. And if it's rejected, that's okay. The authorization will go away. But if it's not, then you can um, process the payment. And as a bonus, let's say it's a subscription, right? So they pay $100 a month or $30 a month, you know, to post and edit their posts and things like that. Well, again, this is just with a form builder. Here you can have them, they do have to have a user account, right? But they can log in and they can update their subscription. They can cancel their subscription. Um, they can see their payment history. They can update their billing, uh, their billing details, okay? So would that be like the membership piece of it? Like yes. Be a member yes. Yes. But again, that's with a form builder. A lot of people think that, oh, I have a membership site. I need these, you know, I have this recurring subscription. I need a membership plugin. No, this is, I mean, it's simple. Right? Yes, sir. All the credit card information is uh, held by the credit card process. Correct. Right? Yes. Yeah. Now, this is, um, this particular example is with Stripe. Um, there are ways that you can, you know, shoot yourself in the foot. Uh, so if you're using something like Authorize.net, um, they're not going to make sure that you're not holding on to credit card information. So that is up to you to make sure you're not holding on to it. If you use Stripe, it's automatic. You're you're not holding on to it at all. But there are other processors that you are able to. Okay, so. And you don't want to. Yeah, you don't want to. <laughs> You know, unless you've gone through um, the whole PCI compliance procedure, you know, and then if you, if you know what you're doing in, in, in that area, then that's fine. What about PayPal? Yeah, PayPal you're not holding on to. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, I mean, you've been talking about uh, receiving information and displaying it on yes. the Yes. I'm assuming that you can not also, you can choose not to display it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got the content submitted, all right? We've got it paid for, we've got it approved, and we've got it displayed on our site. But what if the person needs to go back and update the content? All right, well, that is actually not a problem, okay? So when people submit their content, what you're going to do is create a username and a password for them so that they can log in and edit their information. Here's an example. Allow logged in users to edit the entries uh, they've created. Um, there are some instances where they do not have to have a username and password, um, but it, it just depends. You know, it's not, not very safe, not very secure. So if it's just simple things, then that's fine. Um, but normally, what you want them to have is a username and password. Now, people. Um, you know, when you say give them a username and password, they're worried about people logging in and doing crazy things on their site. Well, no. Um, just because you give someone a username and password doesn't mean they have any permissions to do anything on your site. So it's, um, it's not as bad as you think it is. Okay. If a person makes multiple um, postings, do they get one username and password? Or is yes. It per, is it per nope. Event? Just one. And then you can have, um, I showed a screen before that had a list. And when they log in, they can see a list of all of, all of their postings. And then, as it's shown here, they can go in and there'll be an option to edit it. Okay, it'll say edit. Yes. Are the username and password created automatically? Yes. Okay. Yep, it's created automatically. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this, well, another thing that I find that this is good for is when you have team members that you need to perform actions on your site, but you don't want them to have access to the back end or, like I said, you want to keep them focused. All right? You don't want them looking around at, um, at all the other things. Another uh, way that I've seen this used is um, when you have, um, I'm trying to give a good example. So one was I had someone where they um, created uh, warranty contracts for car dealerships, right? So they needed the dealerships to be able to go in and enter 
um, you know, whenever they made a sale, enter the warranty information, and then they needed that warranty information sent over to Salesforce. Okay, but if you know anything about Salesforce, Salesforce charges per user, right? So they didn't want to have to create a user account for all of their dealers to go into Salesforce and to add their, um, their warranties, right? So what they did was they used the form builder and they set it up so that the person came in through their form builder, entered the warranty information, which then got sent to Salesforce, but then if they needed to update that, they were able to come back to their WordPress site, edit the warranty information that they submitted, and then that updated information got sent to Salesforce. All right, so they kind of saved some money there without having to create uh, user accounts for everyone. Okay, so our challenge in the beginning was to allow people other than you to submit content on your site without giving them access to the back end, uh, to display the content that they submitted on your site, okay, to approve the content that they submitted, to pay to submit content, to go back and update the content that they submitted, and have it all on autopilot, okay? And notice that we did all of this with a form builder, okay, which you already have, all right? Not a single line of code, all right? So give your form builder a chance. Someone asked me, well, what form builder do I use? Um, Use the one you already have, right? Uh, use the one that, um, that you like, that works best for you. These are three of the most popular ones. There are so many other ones. There are more uh, popping up every day. Um, but just remember, if you need to receive data and then process that data, ask if your form builder is up for the job, okay? And so I know I went through that kind of fast, but I am like right on time. I did awesome. Uh, if you would like a detailed write-up, okay, of how I put all of this together and a list of everything that I used, you can just go here, gravityplus.pro slash WordCamp, and I'm going to send that to you. Plus, I have a few bonuses, all right? If you don't already have a form builder, um, I have some attendee-only discounts for you uh, on some of them. So... Go there. I'm, I am going to take it down once I leave just because I get people spamming it. So I take it down um, once I'm done, but I'm going to send the attendee-only discounts, all of the tools that I used there uh, in multiple form builders, okay, um, and a couple of other case studies like I mentioned with the guy um, who did the warranties uh, for car dealerships. And I'll also send over the slides and the speaker notes if that's something, you know, that you, um, that you get value out of, okay? Um, I'll be around for the rest of the day. It's not that long, but, and I'm happy to answer any, you know, can my form builder do this or is this a good job for my form builder type of questions. We now have about 15 minutes for questions, so, um, yes. So with the, um, the user accounts, if they want to log in to edit, are they logging in through WordPress? Login? Yes, yes. So they would use that, but then is it like direct, but they're not seeing, no. are they seeing a different kind of back end or? No. Nope. It'll, um, <clears throat> when someone logs in that has no permissions, they just get sent back to the front end of the site. Okay. And then they'll, but they'll still see like whatever they... Yeah. They'll be able to see whatever they submitted. But they'll still have them on the front end. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there are plugins that allow you to, when someone logs in, you can redirect them to a certain page. So you can redirect them to uh, the page that you have set up with all of their entries that they submitted. Okay. So it probably lets you set the default user type when that account is created too, right? Um, yeah, you can set the, um, yeah, mm -hmm. yes. So do I need to add, I guess, on the page, if I don't have anywhere right now where if someone goes to my website, they can't, there's nowhere for them to log in or create a user, so I need to add that to the site somewhere? Um, so you can have that just through the form builder, so when someone submits a form, it can automatically create a user account for them. But then she's saying the, they're using the login and the connection. Oh. You're so saying a login link? So, yeah, so I'm saying right now there's nowhere for anyone to log in. So mm -hmm. if I create the form, mm -hmm. I can create the form where you fill out all the information and submit, but in that same process you, you will be creating a user with a password, and yes. now you do have access to be able to come back because you would be a logged in user if you need to come back and edit or do something else. Okay. Yes, yes. And you can create, if you want to say, well, um, you need a login link, so when people come to your site, they know where to log in. You can just put that anywhere in your menu um, somewhere. Okay. Yes. 
there any ability to do password recovery? Yeah, that's default in WordPress. So. But we're at a form builder level, aren't we? Yes. So, but, but WordPress has their own default password recovery uh, system. So what you can do is you can create a password recovery form and it'll just go through WordPress. Okay. So you can say forgot my password and I, I at least know that Gravity Forms has instructions on how to set that up. Yes, sir. Um, for uh, people that are accepting um, like media files through Forms, is there anything about maybe like a malicious file checker? Yeah, so WordPress um, by default has um, a certain certain file types that can be accepted and then in your form builder in the image in the file upload field you can set the file types that can be accepted as well so you can kind of limit uh, what people can upload let's say you only want people to be able to upload PNGs or JPEGs okay um, I know by default WordPress does not accept SVGs so that's something that you have to enable uh, yourself if you want to so all right. Any other questions? Yes. I'm not clear on, on how often and for what purpose people use form builders to actually build content, like you know, content that would be search engine eligible for optimization kind of content. Okay. Um, so. I guess specifically what I was talking about here was user submitted content, so where you want people to uh, submit things. Now, if you want to go back and um, you know make sure that it's search engine optimized, then that is something that you would have to do manually. So you would go into wherever you edit, um, you know, the WordPress post or the form entry, and you know if you're using an SEO plugin like Yoast. Um, you know that'll be set up on the form and you can look at I'm sorry that'll be set up on the post where you go to edit the post and you can look at it and see okay what do I need to edit but you can always go back in yourself and edit it but that's not something that you can automatically handle okay so is this like when people leave comments about something that's on a page? No, well let's say you have a recipe site right and you want other people to submit recipes on your site as well Right? Because that helps you out. You're not having to create and submit recipes all the time. Well, this is where you just create a form. Someone goes to that form and they can submit their recipe and it'll automatically show up on your site. Right? So you're getting your site filled with great content without you having to be so hands-on. Gotcha. Okay. Yes, sir. You did mention that uh, there's also the possibility of taking the form and loading it into a database or some type of... Uh, uh, capture so that you can then repurpose it <clears throat> as a page of information. Specifically, I'm looking to do a volunteer list. Yes. So, and I would want to do it by uh, each uh, school that needed volunteers. So you could do you could do a whole page of volunteers for school A, school B, and school C. <clears throat> or maybe repurpose it to say, I need readers, I need math, I need science. Whatever. Sure. So you could take the, the data that's input from there mm -hmm. and use it out on another in another way. It wouldn't have to be a posted comment. Correct. So here's an example of let's say you have let's say this is a list of volunteers. All right. Um, what what you can see is that each of those um, let's say you have one column for school school A school B. People can sort the list right. by that. What you can also do, though, is um, you can also have searching, all right? So let's, so here's an example. This is a list of businesses, all right? If you notice up at the top where it says business name, that's a search box. So let's say people want to search for school A. Just put school A in, and then all of um, everything that was submitted for school A will show up, all of the volunteers for them. Right. OK. Did you display? based on school A, like a page for school A? Yes, yeah. So, I don't have a good image. I can show you, if you you know come afterwards, I can show you on the website. It's just that the internet is really slow and I didn't want, you know, don't do live demos during a presentation, right? That's the rule. Um, but you can have, um, you can have conditional logic on this where you can say, in this particular view, only show 
um, entries from school A. And it'll look something like that, but not exactly. I have one here. So, like there's an example, show only approved entries, you know. That's one where we're only showing uh, a certain subset of information. Any other questions? Yes? So you had said earlier, for example, if the person was submitting multiple recipes yes. um, and they get their ID and password, there's a way of seeing the recipes that only they submitted. Yes. How do you do that? Is there like a, a specific page that's set up for each person that shows only their recipes? Or how, how, is that, how does that happen? I mean, when they go back to the front end of the site, it would seem that they would only see, they would see everything that's on the front end of the site. So how do, sure. how do you have specific information tailored to a person who uses it? Sure. So if the person is logged in, uh, then you can have them automatically sent to a page that only, and it's, it's just one page that you set up, but in the, um, in the, ad, in the extension that you're using to, um, to show all of the entries, you can have it set up so that it only shows the entries for that logged in user. So it's smart enough and it says, okay, this is the user that's logged in, so I'm only going to show uh, these particular recipes on the recipes page. Now, if it's, go ahead. Do you have to create that, or, or does it automatically do that? Yeah, so you just create a page to show recipes, right? right. And then um, I think I think I showed it. Uh, where was it? <coughs> this one was for editing, but you see, um, just like it says, show only approved entries. There's another. Um, there's another one, um, another setting where it says show only, show only the entries for this logged in user. Would that be under filter okay. insert maybe? Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe, but I'm not so if positive. So if we're interested, is this all using gravity? Yes. What you're doing? Mm -hmm. um, so if we're interested in, because I don't have an official form builder, like do you guys offer support? Yeah, do, you do they have support? Oh yeah, they have support. Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. Amy, do you know what the uh, do you know what the name of this extension is? This one is Gravity View. There are other form builders that have it built in. Okay. Um, is that an official Gravity Forms add-on, or is it in a third party? Extension? Yeah, that's a third party. Okay. So. So these are so the basic Gravity doesn't do this. You have to add right. on. Yeah. Yeah, and that's really the whole idea with a form builder is that you have the basic form builder, and then you have for whatever it is that you want to do, you have all of these different extensions, kind of like Lego pieces. So, uh, they not all of them, them you know. So, like PayPal is free. Um, there's a free Stripe one. Um, for this kind of functionality. Oh, then now this. Well, this one is paid. There are there are a couple different ones. Okay, so I'll send that to you. So you have options. There are two that are free, and one that's paid. This is the. I mean, it's good either way. This is the big one. Yeah. So. If it works, I'm like, should I get support? I'm like, fabulous. If it breaks, somebody needs to fix it. That's not me. <laughs> yeah, he's he's really good. I know I know the author, and he's really good. So he'll take care of you. Any other questions? Yes. Do membership plug? I'm not familiar with membership plugins at all. Do they? Can they also accomplish this? Yes. Well, they won't show entries. They won't show um, information that's submitted on a form. Really what membership plugins are for is for restricting content. Uh -huh. um, so only show this, pa this particular page um, you know, to this particular membership level and they will handle the payments, all right, so the subscription levels. Um, yeah, so they're all about membership levels and payments and restricting the content restricting the content on your WordPress site to particular membership levels. Okay. Yes? Can that be unique to certain users? So that like they may all have the same membership level but they can only see their content? For membership plugins? Come in and update any kind of work. For membership plugins or for a form builder? For a uh, thing for membership, yeah. 
what I'm trying to do, I've got about 600 farms. I want them to be able to come to my website, mm -hmm. update me with what they've got on their farm. Okay. So that when I'm distributing the things that need to happen, I know how much they've got that I can pull from. But I don't really want other farms to know what that farm is doing. Oh yeah, so you don't, so you don't want other farms to see that uh, that information. Well, yeah, that's part of showing only the uh, entries and information that a person submits to that person, and then to you, the administrator of the site. All right, so it can be completely private. You know, it's not something that has to be open to the public. Okay. But does it support membership levels? Can it support membership levels, or you really need a membership plugin to do? Like, do you want it to be? Gold, bronze, silver, for whatever. That you would probably need a membership. Well, you can take pay you can take use a form to. Well, yeah, you can take payments for that. Um, one of the examples that I showed you was people upgrading and downgrading their subscription. Yeah. So people can subscribe to different levels, but now what the form builder won't do is restrict content on your site based on the membership level. Excuse me? You have to have a sign in on your page to get the restrict to the membership level. So, if you want to use a form builder for very simple membership stuff, you know, it can take the payments and have people log in, but now if you need the membership level, um, membership level based actions on the site, then a form builder won't do that. But if you were using like a membership in roles plugin where you create custom membership levels, does that work in partnership with forms? Uh, you can, when someone um, pays on the form, you can assign them to a custom so member yeah. role. And that member role might restrict access. Well, the, well then, yeah, you would need a way to, to do that. Okay. But still, but still on your site, you still have to have a login for each membership like for each member. And you know, that's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions? I think my time is up. Yes? So, so you talk about using a membership plugin and the Gravity Flow or a form builder to get this kind of structured thing? Of well, everything that we did... Their stuff. Everything that I did here was just using a form builder. No membership plugins. Just the data. Yes. So... My goal here was to show you very simple uh, membership functionality without having to use a big membership plugin because everyone doesn't need that. Um, you know, I would say if you don't need to, um, you know, restrict content, restrict pages and posts by membership level on your site, then maybe you don't need a, a big membership plugin. All right. So it's just an alternative, something that could work. Like I said, I just want your form builder to get an interview. Just let them interview for the job, right? <laughs> and if they don't, if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. You know, no tool is going to work the best for, for everything. Okay, that's my time. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.